Jonathan Van Maren is CCBR's Communications Director. Jonathan's writings have been published internationally and he has received awards for combating anti-Semitism from national Jewish organizations. He has spoken at churches and high schools across Canada as well as in the United States. Jonathan holds a Bachelor of Arts in History from Simon Fraser University. Please join me in welcoming up Jonathan Van Maren. Abortion, how we will end the killing in our lifetime. Now I recognize that that may sound like a very bold claim for us to be making, so I'm so thankful to each and every one of you for giving us the opportunity tonight to explain why we are very confident that we can end the killing of preborn children in Canada within our lifetimes. Because throughout history, whenever great injustices existed, youth movements have risen up to combat and end those injustices. William Wilberforce was only 28 years old when he decided to take on the slave trade in Great Britain. Lewis Hine was 32 years old when he joined forces with the National Child Labor Committee to take on the practices of child labor. And university students, black and white alike, were the lifeblood of the civil rights movement fighting to end segregation and the laws of Jim Crow. And today in Canada, it's time for a new youth movement to combat Canada's abortion status quo that puts us in the same camp as China and North Korea. I think you got a picture just a moment ago of what the End the Killing Youth Movement looks like and how we're going to change Canada when you saw a group of young people, each of which have many testimonies of minds that they have changed themselves. Using a simple set of arguments, they have shifted the worldviews of their peers on the streets, taking it to the culture, explaining to them why abortion kills a preborn child. Even the Toronto Star, the most liberal and largest newspaper in Canada, had to admit on their front page that the pro-life movement is now young. Even Joyce Arthur of the Abortion Rights Coalition of Canada had to admit that the face of pro-life as stodgy and overtly stuck in the past is completely gone because the youth are showing up and we're saying it's time to stop killing our generation. Because what our opponents outside don't realize is that you can't build a youth movement if your mov movement is based on killing off the youth. <laughs> because in Canada today, since 1969, over three million pre-born children have been decapitated, dismembered, and disemboweled. Since 1988, the year I was born, Abortion has been completely unrestricted. It's legal throughout all nine months of pregnancy, from conception right up until birth, for any reason or for no reason at all. In Canada, you can get an abortion just because your pre-born child is a girl and you don't want to have a girl. In Canada, you can get an abortion just because your child has Down syndrome and you don't want to take care of a disabled child. In Canada, you can even get an abortion just because you want to go on vacation to Hawaii and your pregnancy is inconvenient to you. And that's not a hypothetical example. That actually happened in BC. And as if to complete this hellish and grotesque picture, several months ago in Alberta, a woman got a suspended sentence, no jail time, for strangling her baby son and throwing his corpse over the fence. The judge justified her decision by saying that Canada has accepted abortion and therefore sympathizes with infanticide. <laughs> not, that it makes you, not that it should make you feel any better, but she got two weeks in jail for improper disposal of a human corpse. Because in Canada, you are not va valued based on what you are or who you are. You are valued based on how old you are and where you are. And this is something that needs to end because 266 babies every single day are being shredded in clinics and hospitals. 100,000 babies a year are being killed. So for a moment, I'm going to show you a video clip that shows you the faces of Canada's invisible children. Now some of you might be thinking, well, these pictures are, are very hard to look at, they're a bit controversial. and..." You know, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with these pictures because of the impact they have on post-abortive women, etc. 
Now, I used to have the exact same fears, the exact same discomforts. <coughs> and then Jojo Ruba and Stephanie Gray invited me to attend a campus project utilizing graphic images for pro-life outreach. So I went to an hour of training, I collected a stack of pamphlets and I went out into the campus and I was really looking forward to having some hot and heavy debates with people similar to those you saw outside. So I was standing there and this woman came by about 21 years old and I stuck out my hand and I offered her a pamphlet and I said, what do you think about abortion? And she took my pamphlet and she stopped and she was staring at the picture behind me and then she started crying. And she said, well, I had an abortion three weeks ago. And suddenly I didn't know what to say because I could explain to her that her baby was a human being, but her baby had already been killed. I could explain to her that her baby was a person, but it was too late. She had already gone through with the abortion. So I started to feel very, very self-conscious about what I was standing in front of. And I said, well, what do you think of these pictures then? And then her grief began to be mixed with anger. and She said, nobody told me that abortion did that. Nobody showed me what abortion looked like. And my baby had to pay for that with her life. And that's when I realized that her sin of commission was my sin of omission. Because in a country filled with people who call themselves Christian, filled with people who call themselves pro-life, the only person who was willing to talk to this girl about abortion was a man who killed her baby and took her money. And that is something that should sit very, very wrong for every single one of us. Because I just described this horrible status quo for you. While in Canada, every single one of those butchered children are paid for by our tax dollars. We have blood on our hands, you and me, by very virtue of being tax-paying Canadians. And after I talked to this girl, I realized it is not wrong for a woman to see a graphic image. It's only wrong when we don't decide to show her that image in time. I'm going to show you a brief video clip now. 